Today we're going to build this monstrosity. More specifically, the circuit that powers it. The brains of the operation. So the first step in this project, you want to print out the circuit board. Uh, you want to go into Microsoft Word, flip it horizontally, and then you want to run it through your laser printer a few times. That generally sucks. So uh, trying to get the paper to line up with each print is tough, but it'll take a few tries. You'll eventually get it. Now you want to go over to your parts bin, take out a few year old crummy Copper circuit board, double sided because we're fancy like that. This thing's got to be at least a decade old. It's all chewed up and beat up, but it'll work. So, you just want to overlay that on there and then cut her out. Now you want to delicately cut her out. <laughs> Grab some steel wool, clean that coating off real good. This also doubles as rust removal for your scroll saw, so that's perfect. Both sides, because we don't need the copper on the back. So instead of using the CNC, we're gonna do the ferric chloride etch, because uh, a lot more people have that handy, and quite frankly, I, I still suck at the CNC. Ah, she looks good, nice and clean. Now we're just going to hit her with some uh, acetone or brake clean and iron the uh, iron the paper on there. This stuff here, cum gutter, absolute best you can get. Gets rid of everything. Even gives you cancer for free. Well, at the cost of three bucks a can, but I'm not complaining. Now what you want to do, put this somewhere you're not going to get it all oily and whatnot. And you want to cut this out. Give yourself a little overhang on the edges. Grab your circuit board. Try to hold it by the edges so you don't get your hand oils all over there or your KY jelly. And we're going to use scotch tape, which will probably melt and cause a mess, but that was the closest around. All right, there we go. So we got the inverted board on the copper, which is going to melt on there and create the uninverted board double negativing and giving it yeah if you want to do sneak into the wife's closet get her little iron look at that try not to get caught otherwise your project will end right now And we'll set it to max, because why not? Hmm. Yeah, she's getting hot. Get your board on there. Oh, that's hot. Now comes the tricky part. Trying to give it nice, even weight and heat and not screwing it up too bad. I just try to hold it down with a bit of pressure. Moving it might be a bad thing. I don't really know all that well. Don't quite do this every day. Oh, that's hot as shit. Oh, god damn. I don't know if you see that, but you can actually see it looks like the, uh, the toner there is actually melting into things, so that's, that's a good sign. 
We're on the right track, boys. So the heat's actually making a toner from the laser jet. And keep in mind, you need to use a laser jet. Can't do it with a, an ink jet or whatever other fancy printer you might have. Has to be a laser jet because they use the uh, polymer powder. It's actually almost like a powder coat um, material. Except it's got more cancer in it. And this is just the uh, cheap fake replacement toner from China. So it's probably got extra. Love getting more than you pay for. That's probably about on there. I hope. So next step we're gonna remove the uh, bulk of the paper and then wet it and basically scrub it off real gent gently with our hands and delicate fingers to uh, get rid of as much of the paper as possible uh, expose the copper so that our solution can etch it and then uh, and touch up any spots that might be missing toner with Sharpie um, Sharpie is very good at resisting the ferric chloride so if you really wanted to you could draw this whole circuit with Sharpie um, that would probably not be the most fun you ever had but it's something you can do the scotch tape left a bit of mess on there we're going to clean it up with the cum gutter just so we don't have leftover copper on the back of the board I'll bring it into the sink room just want to get the paper nice and soft our hope is the majority of the circuit board stays on and the paper all comes off so far so good Let's see if we can screw it up towards the end Looks like a little brush helps too. Just don't be too aggressive, you'll brush the toner right off. Then you're up that creek everyone talks about where you don't want to drink the water. That looks pretty damn good. Taking a bit of a trip down memory lane with the uh, Radio Shack. Rest in peace even though you're still online but no one uses you. stuff dies the heck out of everything and it appears my bottle has glazed over good crusty probably a bit overkill but that'll be plenty and drop her in in about an hour and a half and we're looking good Came out pretty nice. Looks like we might have one little string of copper in one spot, but we can fix that up with the Dremel, no problem. So now what you can do is just grab some uh, acetone. Put a bit on there. Here's the board all nice and clean. You can see where I missed the bridge here. So. I gotta just nick that little bit of copper away with the Dremel and then get on to drilling the holes. Not the prettiest fix, but it'll work. So your next step is gonna be to mark out the uh, each little uh, through hole on the board so you can uh, get your component leads in there. Bring them over to your drill press, or you know, if you're using a hand drill, that's good too. This drill bit's got some wobble to it, but it should work. And just drill out each one of those holes. Oh, got a spinny board. Now it comes time to install the components. Um, you can see I already have the little uh, IC holder here. For the 555 timer. Basically we're setting it up to act as a square wave generator. Um, so in this configuration it's called an A-stable multi-vibrator. Hey there you go, butane power. 
And if you don't have a good torch, this thing here, Cortisol, I don't know the model, but it is the best thing running. So this little guy here, focus, is the brains of the entire operation, the 555 timer. It is an awesome little chip, tons of uses for the hobbyist, and you can do a lot of cool stuff with it. Not the prettiest solder job. There are many a five-year-old Chinese kid who could beat me in this. Get yourself a good dike. Bring out the good old box of resistors. That is what you need. So, a little expensive, but uh, it's worthwhile to get, get a good box of resistors. That way you can get any one you need. Yeah, what are we looking for? Uh, 100. Funny thing is, I think I have a huge roll of 100 ohm resistors. This is where a set of helping hands really comes in handy. I guess the name would kind of imply that, wouldn't it? But uh, for a few bucks on Amazon, hard to beat. Holes are a little big for the resistor lead, so I'm having trouble kind of bridging over them. Should have used a smaller drill bit. But you know what they say about hindsight. It's a bitch. A bit of soldering later, and we have this. You can see I put a big heat sink on the uh, MOSFET there. We got our 100 ohm, uh, uh, blah, 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 drawing a blank, nothing like it, 100 ohm pot there, uh, all those resistor values, some tiny, tiny little, little diodes in there, the, uh, what are they, 1N4, uh, 1N4148. So we plugged our 555 chip in, make sure it's going the right direction. Check your board, <clears throat> check your board for uh, any solder bridges. I did have one solder bridge that I caught. Um, I probably should check it again since I've done some soldering since then. But it's a pretty nice looking board. So now all we need to do is hook up the ignition coil, which I'm using red for the positives here. So your one side has battery, positive going in other side goes to the coil I stripped a little bit extra off there just so we can screw that down on the coil post and then I'm using yellow for the coil negative lead why yellow because it's what I had and usually yellow is a good indicator of you know high voltage although usually it's I've seen it more often used on the positive side of things rather than as a, a negative but it's what we had so it'll work so here we go, got our 12 volt lead acid battery, uh, some leads coming from that to the negative over here, positive here. We got our board, we'll adjust the pot a little bit once we get it up and running. We got the ignition coil, um, you can use pretty much any old can type ignition coil like this. Um, any of these guys are really going to work for it as long as you have two inputs, uh, well I guess just a positive input and a ground. But uh, let's hook up the positive and there we go. Oh, and I just got shocked. She's got some buzz. Ooh. That's got some real buzz to it. That's just what you want. This probably can kill you. And be super careful because that is at live voltage. The uh, heat sink there will shock the shit out of you. There we go. That's sounding a little too generous in my opinion. Get the camera zoomed in on that.
Don't do this shit if you have a heart condition. Or a shark condition. jack up your whole weekend. Alright, so disconnect the positive. We're back to safe grounds. That is how you build a wicked ignition coil driver. Super simple circuit. Stupid simple circuit, honestly. So you basically just have the 555 generating a square wave, driving this MOSFET the MOSFET's your big switch, so that's clunking up and down, up, up and down, but it's it's solid state, so you don't have any of those spark gaps or anything going on, no contacts to weld, so you're, oh, that heat sink's warm, that thing's, that thing's moving some current. So the IRF 640 MOSFET is acting as your switch, this, uh, this adjusts your, I think your, uh, not actually the frequency, but what that's doing is adjusting your pulse width. So you could have, you know, approximately 50-50 up-down, or you could have most of the time up, short drop, and quick up again. So that's that's basically how the 555 timer is working. Uh, it's giving you, you know, a frequency out as a square wave, driving the 640, acting as a big switch, clunking this back and forth. And when the voltage stops here, or when the current stops here, uh, the magnetic field wants to remain constant. So that's basically... Uh, so what this big inductor here is doing is it's creating a huge voltage to try to keep its magnetic flux and that huge voltage spike comes out here so it's it's pretty damn cool and that that big flux is seen in the secondary coil so that is how she works enjoy guys be safe don't repeat this at home get out there experiment but you know just keep your minds about you don't do anything stupid. Subscribe if you want to see me build more cool shit. Otherwise, just smash that like button.